Okay, so as I was saying, they start looking to the old stuff, uh, classical texts from the Greeks and Romans. So uh, who is it that's looking for these things? Well, we'll talk about them in a second. It's the humanists who are going to lead this. Um, but basically what it comes down to is that uh, people who are looking to improve their lives are going to start to realize that um, during the Middle Ages, they hadn't really gone for a lot of education or intellectual you know, uh, improvement. Um, and so what's going to happen is uh, some classical texts, things like uh, On the Nature of Things by Lucretius, ancient Greek and Roman writings, um, are going to make their way into Europe as a result of the trade and increased trade that's going on between East and West. Um, so they had been preserved basically in the Middle East and in Greece. Um, and so those things are going to make their way in. And it's really going to change the way that people start to think about their lives and the world in which they live. So um, while it might seem kind of strange for uh, you know a seventh grader to think about like, how do you make your life better, uh, the reality is that it's, it's searching for knowledge, it's educating yourself and becoming a smarter, better person. So as the Middle Ages come to an end, uh, people wanted to gain knowledge, they wanted to gain understanding, and they're gonna to start to look towards those classical Greek and Roman texts, okay? And this is gonna to lead to, well, in essence, the people that are looking to those Greek and Roman texts or what we call humanists, right? So it's gonna to lead to the movement known as humanism, okay? So what exactly is humanism? Humanism is a movement um, by uh, folks that kind of focus, I mean, for lack of a better way of describing it, on the human, right, on human beings, um, that humans themselves were a really important part of the world, um, that individual humans, so when you combine this with like individualism, um, that you're going to have, instead of having to be a part of a group, which was really important when you were in the Middle Ages, right, if you weren't a part of a guild or if you weren't a part of the church, then you didn't really have any say in society, right, you had to be a part of these big groups. Um, what's going to start to happen is people are going to say, hey, as an individual, if I've got a good brain, if I've got great creative ideas, then I want to express those and I should be able to be recognized for it, right? So um, when you uh, combine this idea of like the humanist movement, where um, no longer, you know, they're, looking, they're a little more secular. Um, the church isn't quite as important as it once was. You combine that with individualism, and then what you end up getting is uh, this focus on individual human improvement, right? And improving yourself individually uh, as a human is also going to lead to an entire society doing that. And when everybody's trying to improve themselves, to get smarter, to be more um, creative, to do all the things that you want to do as a, as a human on the planet, uh, that's going to lead to improvements in everything. It's going to be improvements to yourself, but it's also going to lead to improvements in technology and ideas, uh, which are all going to build upon each other. And that's going to lead to the Renaissance, right? This movement that uh, improves creativity and uh, leads us to the modern world. So um, ultimately what it comes down to, as I've also told you guys, is that art is a big way that we see this kind of creative change, right? So if you take a look at these current uh, paintings that you see here on the screen, you've got obviously the famous Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, you've got this one, which is the Ar Armolfini wedding uh, by Jan von Eck. Um, and what you see here is uh, more expressive faces. You see emotion. You see uh, three-dimensionality uh, in the uh, Jan von Eck piece. Uh, you can see that there's linear perspective. It actually goes deep into the picture. And there's details that you would never have normally seen in a medieval work of art. So as an example, if we do a little close-up on even the background of the von Eck painting, the uh, wedding, um, what you see in the way back there is a mirror on the wall. And if you zoom into that thing and take a look at it, you can actually see in the mirror a reflection of the room that's being painted. So you can see the painter and the people in the, in the background. You can see the backs of the people. These are things you would never have seen. People would very rarely have even thought about it. And what's really important about this particular movement, okay, this idea of people who are going to be creative and artistic in the way that they do things, they're going to follow their passions. Um, they're going to follow the things that make them happy is that you're going to start to see artists who are going to start to say, hey, as an individual and as a creative human being, I think I deserve some credit for the work that I did. A lot of the artists of the Middle Ages really didn't put their names on things. They, for the most part, said, hey, this is something that God helped me to create. Like, you know, I'm just a I'm just a painter. I, I thought I'm myself. I'm not that important. What you're going to start to see is people say, hey, look, I've put some time into being the best person I can be, the most creative person I can be and getting education on how to be a great painter or a great writer or what have you. They're going to start to say, I'm putting my name on this. I'm going to take credit for this. So you'll start to see guys saying, hey, I'm Michelangelo, right? Or I'm Leonardo da Vinci and I did this and you didn't, right? So that's an important aspect of this uh, whole process as well. So that is the origins of the Renaissance. Thank you guys for joining me. As I've mentioned to you before, um, please feel free. I gave you this as a voiceover, but the reality is I'm also going to post just the actual lecture notes. And if you just want to go through those to take your time and get down what you need to, you are welcome to do that as well. Thanks very much, guys, and good luck with all of that. Uh, there's your first assignment.